The FA Cup returns for this coastal derby as these two teams are separated by just 12 miles. It's Margate against Hearn Bay for match day 12. We're in Margate this afternoon for this FA Cup third round qualifying tie. The 26 places separate these two local rivals. They're both in good form as well. They have both had good wins in the last round of the Cup. Hearn Bay beat Horsham 5-2 and Margate had a 1-0 win over Kings Langley. But only one of them can make it through to the fourth round. Plenty of noise as both these teams make their way out. It's a local derby on the coast between Margate and Hearn Bay and it's the FA Cup third round qualifying. And for the winners, just one step away from the first round proper. Fascinating game in Stormick. We've seen Hearn Bay in their last game and they can be dangerous going forward. The experience of Margate, though, will be a different test for them today. Well, all the pressure's on Margate, in all honesty. Hearn Bay will come here and play with freedom and that well, might well help their cause but I do feel the experience and the know-how of Margate will come through today. Plenty of experience in the Margate team and two former Hastings United players, Lenny Pidgeley and Franny Colling in the starting lineup for them. And for Hearn Bay, we saw in the last round that Nassam Dukali offers a threat on the wing, extremely dangerous and bagged a goal against Horsham in the last round as well. It's a good goal too. Again, looking at both sides, you can see the physical side of uh, Margate, the way they've got muscles bulging out from everywhere there. And you just look at the sort of like the physiques of the youngsters from um, Hearn Bay. Perhaps their endurance might win over the Margate side today. First few passes strung together by Hearn Bay as they look to... Keep hold of the ball. Ducali gets his first touch, looks to play it in towards Embry. He got a goal in the last round. Embry with a neat layoff and Hearn Bay have kept possession for five or six passes and they'll need to keep that up during the game. And it's a really good run through from Stevenson. Oh. Shoots! Just touched around the post from Pidgeley and Steventon was given so much room to run through the middle. I think he took Bar Margate by surprise there. Edge of the box, took a shot. And Pidgeley had to be alive in the first few minutes of the game to tip that round the post. Yeah, I mean, if Home Bay get a goal, their confidence will go sky high. I think uh, Margate need to sort of get out. Of them. Home Bay will come out the blocks quicker at the second. Bent Hunt Hunter in the Home Bay goal tries to do a pinpoint pass to one of his players. Let's get it out of play. Now Margate come forward, and this could be the first opportunity for Margate. Needed to be a really good tackle. It was. Chidozi had made a good run into the 18 yard box there. and Jonathan Richardson it was, I think, Ben, that made a great tackle. And Richardson needed to get that right because he was in behind. And that would have been a stonewall penalty. And perhaps a red card if he'd have been brought down. Margate with their first corner of the game. And it goes to the box. It's easily headed away by Ducali. Bouncing around in the box, though. And Herne Bay need to get this away and do just about enough but Margate win it back on the edge of the 18 yard box what can they do a little step over ding ding great cross and Ben Hunter made sure that was his Franny Collin puts the ball down for Margate 30 yards out just to the left as we look of the 18 yard box Franny Collin strikes a brilliant strike just past the post and I said it had to be something special from there and it almost was from Franny Collin Superb strike, just whipped it with his right foot. And it, I thought it just went past the post, but it was actually Ben Hunter that tipped that one round. Superb effort. Get possession back, and it's causing Margaret a few problems when they manage to do it. Well, yeah, because Friend's not the most paciest guy in the world, so if they can play on him, they might have some opportunities to score a goal. Ducali manages to keep that in, and... Akin Hobert looks for the overhead kick, managed to get the ball down. It's in the, on the edge of the 18-yard box. What can they do? Can they get it in? It's an effort of a cross from Carlton and a good passage of play from the visitors. And as we mentioned before kickoff, they are dangerous going forward and they will cause problems if Margate let them. Akin Hobert with a lovely, neat touch again and keeps possession well he's got plenty of strength up there to hold off those Margate defenders in towards Embry Embry to Akin Hobert that's lovely play from the visitors and perhaps Akin Hobert can get it onto his left foot strikes it Embry's in there goes all the way through to Pidgeley neat build up from Hearn Bay there and they are looking dangerous when they come forward Akin Hobert with great 
control and turn. He's got the strength to hold it off and they seem to have a really good relationship, him and Embry up front. Well, Herne Bay certainly ain't overall by the, the opposition they're playing. They're playing with a lot of freedom like we said they would do and uh, they're not worried about our Margate. They're going for it. And they come forward again and this time they've got four on three. What can they do? Can they put it to this side? They can do into the 18-yard box. Looks to get it across. Margate are going to clear it. Get a little bit fortunate and it's going to fall to Schaefer and Schaefer will put it onto Carlton. Carlton looks to think it into the box again and this time it's Martin who's all the way back there to clear the ball out and it's a good passage of play from Hearn Bay and you do feel like they need to take one of these chances though and create a real opportunity Ducali's not seen much of the ball he gets it now can he get it onto his his right foot Ducali does a little jink crosses the ball in and it goes wide and Pidgeley will take the goal kick Ducali looks to jink and run at the defence again. Lovely touch that he's got, Ducali, into Akin Hobear. He turns. This might be a real opportunity for Herne Bay if they work it well. Akin Hobear got the ball at his feet, looks to play it in. Just got stuck under the foot of Carlton. Carlton gets it back again, though. What can he do with it? Edge of the box. Leonard all the way over to Ducali. Looks to twist and turn. Ducali gets a shot in. Ducali just past the post. Very similar to a position that he found himself in in the game against Horsham. Nassam Ducali just on the edge of the box jinxed onto his right foot and whipped that ball in just around the post it's a sloppy goal kick that's let Chai Dozy in on the edge of the 18 yard box what can he do plays it down cross across Franny Collin inches away and that was a really sloppy goal kick and Collin has got the ball again in the 18 yard box can he get it down for Chai Dozy need to get this away Ben Hunter's kick was easily intercepted and Chidozi had an opportunity, edge of the box, laid it off to Smith and Smith with a cross all the way into the six yard box and Colin just couldn't get on the end of it. Again, Hearn Bay win the ball back and again they can drive forward and this might be an opportunity now if they can get into the box and it's a last ditch challenge that needed to be made and it was made well and Margate at the moment you feel really susceptible to that Hearn Bay counter-attack and Margate will try and come forward now with Chidozi and Hunter comes out Chidozi comes forward and he's going to be in trouble now is he no referee says it's a dive and it was Franny Collin that was in on goal Ben Hunter came out to the edge of the 18 yard box Collin went round him seemed to go over his legs and the referee we all had eyes on him for the moment and he pointed towards a free kick for Hearn Bay and I think Franny Collin is going to receive a yellow card when he gets up but the referee seemed convinced that it was a dive from Franny Collin Margate half and he'll play it towards Schaefer Schaefer might have an opportunity to shoot now what can he do Schaefer on his left foot tries to go back onto his right should have either had a shot or laid it off wanted too much time there Schaefer Ducali picks it up Ducali driving towards the 18 yard box will he get a shot off Ducali Runs into plenty of bodies. Lovely skill from Ducali. Wonderful skill from Ducali. Can he finish it off? That would have been some goal if Nassam Ducali could have had a strike at goal there. Incredible skill from the youngster. We saw it in the last round of the FA Cup. And again, Hearn Bay come forward. And you really feel they need to take the chance and get the goal. Free kick in a dangerous position. And Margate... I've been struggling in this first half. Can they get the ball in now? It's low, driven towards the near post and Hunter spilled it first time but grabbed it second time. Chidozi wants to play in Smith. Smith does get the ball. This is a dangerous opportunity. What can Smith do? Lays it back all the way across the goal. Could have gone anywhere. Franny Collin was in there. Couldn't get a touch on it. That was the best chance of the game for Margate and Collin just couldn't get on the end of it. Maybe Ducali will do it in the last moments of this game. Ducali picks it up and looks again to run at the defence. Couple of men around him. Ducali all the way into the box. That looked like a foul. Referee says it is. Edge of the box. Uh, that was close to a penalty, you know. I fancy that was a penalty. That looked very much to us like it was inside the box. And it's a big decision, big decision for the referee. But always find that they're given on the edge of the 18-yard box. You've got to think this is going to be a strike at goal. See, Ducali's moved away now. That was definitely the ploy. In it goes, high over the bar, and the referee blows for the half-time whistle. 
Franny Collin just looks a frustrated figure in that pitch at the moment but he's going to get the ball now into the 18 yard box what can he do this is where he wants to be twisting and turning lays it off chance for Martin to get the cross in into the 18 yard box this is dangerous needs to be cleared it's only going to be cleared for a corner though first corner of the second half it goes the way of Margate and it will be Collin that takes it corner to Margate they've been second best so far in this game what can they do now in it comes Get the head on it. Dangerous opportunity. Hits the bar. Comes down. Bangs off in the net. And it's going to be the first goal of the game. And you have to say, it's come against the run of play. But Chidozi finds the net at the second time of asking. Hit it in off the bar. And then came back to him. And he made no mistake. It was a little bit scrappy in the end. But good delivery. Bouncing in the box. And Chidozi makes no mistake and puts Margate 1-0 up. Yeah, uh, the big centre-back should have done better. He's got, oh, I was just trying to look at his back, who it was that beat him in the air. I think it's the number two, Winter. Got up really, really well and beat the six-foot-six guy, the centre-back, who was that, Richardson. Got beat airily, and that's where the goal come from. Margate come forward once more and easily intercepted, and this time... Herne Bay will be hoping to come forward and Ducali picks up the ball marked by Sessignon he's definitely been a, a real change in the way he's been marked Sessignon wins it plays it in towards Franny Collins this is really dangerous Collins in the 18 yard box all the way across the Chai Dozi 2-0 and Margate have one foot in the fourth round it was a ball into Ducali he was intercepted by Sessignon the substitute Sessignon played in Franny Collins into the 18 yard box and he squared it across to Chai Dozi and that was a much easier finish for the Margate number nine and they're 2-0 up but I'm a big Amar of Franny Collins we tried to get him at Merston at the back end of last season and he's come in he's, well he's shown his quality now what he done there he looked up that wasn't an easy ball and he could see Trendozi coming in on the far post precision well done fantastic play by Franny Collins and Segerson done well by nicking the ball off Ducali which started the whole thing off and we mentioned that a few moments ago. The substitute, Chris Sessignon, came on and he's been marking Ducali much more tightly and get, getting forward whenever he can. And it's been a real change in this game. Sessignon having a real impact as a substitute at half-time. And he comes forward again, Sessignon, down this near side. Lovely cross into the box. Just goes past Colin all the way across. Franny Colin was almost on the end of it. And it in, went past Chidozi. Martin was there as well. None of them could steer it in. Margate again with possession in and around that 18-yard box. What can they do? Nice twist and turn from Orlando Smith. Looks to get it in but plays it back. It's eventually going to go into the 18-yard box. Could be a head on it here. Oh. Linesman flag stayed down. Everybody looked across. And Dave Martin flicked the ball, but it was wide in the end. That was game over. Should have been a goal. Can't believe he never got his head on that. He was unmarked in the six-yard box. Everyone thought he was offside, and he clearly wasn't. 18 minutes left of the second half. Mick, you've got to be thinking about changes now when you're 2-0 down in FA Cup tie. Yeah, but it doesn't look that way from looking at the uh, stances of uh, the management at Herne Bay. Margate still looking the more likely to get another goal in this game and it will be Smith running forward. Chance for Smith to have a shot. Does have a shot. Needs to be a good save and it really was from Hunter. And it was Orlando Smith into the 18-yard box. Looked like he was going to put that towards the far post and he just twisted his right foot round the ball and Hunter made a good save it's going to be a corner kick I did predict it would be a win their experience and know-how in it goes not cleared bouncing around could be the third goal in the end it will be Schaefer who puts his foot on the ball and I think he's got to bring a couple of lively players, maybe one wide and one up top where he can, they can hit the ball in behind their defence. Akin Hobe's in here, he's into the 18-yard box. What can he do? Drills a shot all the way across. Beats Pidgeley, but also beats the post. And he's been threatening that for most of the game, Akin Hobe, just using his strength to turn the defender. And this time he got past him into the 18-yard box and that shot driven all the way across past the far post, though. And Chidozi thought he was in, but the linesman has flagged for offside. And what's been a little disappointing in the second half, and certainly in the latter stages of it, is there doesn't really seem to be any B plan from Herne Bay. 
And they haven't really gone forward with any urgency, even though they're two goals down. It's chipped in towards Colin. Colin takes it down. This could be the third, though. Colin onto his left foot. Colin into Hunter, who saves well. It's a right height for the keeper. Could have been and probably should have been 3 0 there. Akin Hobear coming forward. A little bit of room for him to turn. Plays it into Embry. This could be the chance. Embry looks to check back on his right foot. Doesn't get the opportunity. Comes all the way across. Six yard box. And if there would have been a, somebody in yellow in that six yard box, they would have got their goal. Showed exactly what quality they do have. Perhaps lacking that experience in a game like this. And Mick, you did point that out before the game. They've maybe got one last chance to get the ball into the box now to get this goal back. In it goes, all the way across. Should have been a goal for Herne Bay. That should have been the goal that they deserved this afternoon. Flashed all the way across the six yard box. And it was Connor Wilkins on the back post. Just couldn't get his foot onto the end of it. Only a minute or so left. It's Bodkin. Bodkin forward. What can he do? Bodkin goes for goal. Produces a save from Ben Hunter. Again, a good height for the keeper, but it was Bodkin's first real effort of the game. On the edge of the box, clean strike, and Hunter pushes it away for a Margate corner. You'd expect your keeper to save those kind of shots, though, Mick. Yeah, good height for him. Good height. You've got to drill them hard and low when you've got a big keeper like uh, the home bay keeper. And the referee blows the final whistle on this FA Cup tie. It was a really terrific encounter between these two coastal uh, local rivals. And Herne Bay can be really pleased with the effort that they put in in this cup tie. They had a great first half. They showed plenty of attacking prowess. Never really troubling Lenny Pidgeley in the goal. And it was the experience of Margate in the second half that saw them through. A couple of goals from Jordan Chadozi, who's the man of the match. And it's Margate that will progress to the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. It's finished here. Margate 2, Herne Bay 0. Well done, Jordan. I picked you for Bostick man in the match today. How do you think the game went? Um, yeah, it was an up and down game. Game of two halves. First half, they were very good. Um, we knew they were going to be good. Like, we looked at, um, Gaffer told us their stats and um, we knew they were going to be a tough opponent. Um, they came out firing. The buzz of the FA Cup, it's a big game for them. So we knew we just have to get through it. And uh, second half, we managed to make the most of our chances and then uh, sort of run away with it a little bit. Can you tell the viewers and ourselves you know, a bit of background about yourself? I don't necessarily have heard your name that, that much uh, through the leagues, but you're obviously going to give us a good bit of background. Yeah, no, I, as a youngster, I was at AFC Bournemouth. I don't know, I'm up to a two-year pro there. Um, then I dropped to non-league. I uh, went to Concord Rangers, did well there, scored a few goals um, in the FA Cup as well. I got a good goal. And then I um, got um, signed by Cambridge United, League Two. Um, played only a few games for them, got loaned out quite a, quite a bit, and then I went back to um, then I went to Bournemouth. Then uh, again didn't work out. Went back to Concord Rangers, did well again last season, and then um, ended up back here. Gaffer for me um, pre-season, and then I wanted to come down, so um, enjoy my time here now. So, what's the expectations of Margaret football, uh, football Club this season? Um, well, um, we're doing very well at the moment. Um, don't want to put too much pressure on ourselves but we know as a squad what we need to do and um, we've got a lot of good, good experienced players um, from that have played a lot higher so um, our expectations are where they need to be um, we'll let everyone else do the talking and everyone else in the league um, talk about what they need to do and we'll just carry on doing what we're doing and what's your personal targets for yourself this season goals wise goals wise um, lap 30 is the mark minimum um, like I, I like to score goals and everywhere I've gone I've always scored goals when I'm, when I'm playing so I'm um, just trying to keep playing, stay fit and I'm sure the goals will come. Taylor with the second ball in towards Carew, it's away by balling I think this time Beanie cushions that one down, Kalkba he can strike a ball as well, takes a deflection, brilliant, Dulwich lead. Cogbo giving a bit of a luck and he scores on consecutive visits to Nywood Lane. Cruel for Worthing. Cogbo shot took a wicked deflection which 
loops it up and over Lucas Kovalan. On the away side, they've not been at their best so far, but they do take a lead in the 28th minute. Now been pressing. Crew shot was charged down. Taylor's ball came in. Back out it went. Beanie had it down for Cargbo. Struck it first time. A lot of power in the shot. And it looped over Kovalan. Now Weatherstone. Beyond Beanie, it will come for Cargbo. Carew, first number on the corner, spins towards Clunis, who gets through his man. 2 0. Clunis on the score sheet again. Number four for the season for the Dulwich, number seven. A bit of breathing space in this game. Patient build up play from the host, from the visitors, sorry. In the end, Carew with the ball around the corner for Clunis. Spun nicely into his path. Puts it beyond Coverland for 2 0. Tory's 90th minute goal for the Hillians sees the Bostic underdogs progress to qualifying round four, defeating Wildstone 1-0. AFC Sudbury's early lead on four minutes was the kiss of death as Churo went to, on to score four. And it was four for Oxford City too, despite Layston's 2-1 lead on 73. Two quick-fire goals on 90 sees them exit the competition. A day to forget for Needham Market as a first-half hat-trick for Alfie Pavey saw the National League leaders put six past them and joining them, Phoenix Sports and Dorking Wanderers also succumbed defeat. Folkestone and Leatherhead bagged their places in the next round with 2-1 wins and wins for Enfield and Haybridge Swifts put their names in the draw too. After an exciting coastal battle between these two local rivals, it's the experience of Margate that triumph over the youth of Hearn Bay and they, like the rest of our Bostic teams, are just 90 minutes away from the first round proper.